everybody, welcome back to Casey Dragmire playing video games. I graduated from high school today. Yeah, so in honor of me graduating, I'm going to go back to four games from my childhood that I can still play without Adobe Flash. And I'm just really doing a, a tour of the legends. This is by all means not all of the online games I used to play as a little kid. There were so many more, but sadly a lot of them have been removed or lost to time or require flash. So these are just a couple of the games I used to like and I'm really excited to get started. So we're gonna play Slitherio first. I was never very good at this, so we'll see how this goes. Oh, that guy's huge. <laughs> I have drawn first blood. Okay. Let's see if I can beat that. That's pretty good. Okay. Is anybody else uh, graduating? Uh, comment down below if you are. Um, maybe like share your favorite memory from high school or something. I remember one time my math teacher, the blinds in his classroom were broken. Oh, it makes you smaller when you hold that down. Okay, well, I just, I won't do that. Um, and he needed to fix them. So he got up on a stepladder and started to fix them, and fell off. So we all joked about that for the next couple of months. Okay, I thought I could kill him because I was bigger. Um, another time... I had a project that I had to do, and it was a four-page essay on the Greek gods, and my teacher kept handing it back because it wasn't long enough, and I did every trick in the book to make it longer, right? I added a whole bunch of unnecessary words, got rid of all my contractions, and made the font just a little bit bigger, and spaced everything just a little bit more, and... It, nothing was working. So, um, I handed the thing in, like, I think four times total, and he kept giving it back, and he kept giving it back. So one day I, like, lost it, and I was ranting about it to somebody else in the hallway, and I said, look, if he doesn't take it this time, I'm just gonna say, no, I'm not doing it again. You can take it. And then I realized he was standing right behind me. So I started acting as if I had been talking about another teacher. Um, and I kind of think it worked, because he didn't ask me about it, which is good. Ha. <laughs> Alright. Um. Art class, uh, this year was pretty great. Uh, I've got a lot of good memories from art class. Uh... One of them is when I found out that a group of kids that always sat in the back weren't actually in my class. Uh, they had just been ditching pre-calc to come sit in my art class every day. Which makes a lot of sense because pre-calc sucks and also my art teacher is an amazing man. He's hilarious, he calls everybody muffin, so... It makes sense that they would want to ditch pre-calc to come hang out with him. But I just, I couldn't believe that these kids that I had been seeing every day, like, it was more weird to not see them, weren't actually in my class. Um, and I only found that out, like, 
the day before the last day of school when one of them said, I'm not even in this class. I, and I had no idea. Okay. Well, that's enough Slitherio for a little while. Um, now we're gonna play Fireboy and Water Girl. Somebody in my graphic art class this year, actually, it's really funny, did a project on Fireboy and Water Girl. We had to make posters for games or books that hadn't become movies. And... She picked Fireboy and Water Girl, which I thought was um, really fun. And we had, um, my favorite part of that project was the fact that we had little buttons um, and the teacher asked us to stick our buttons on a uh, She put a big poster up at the front with everyone's project names and said we should vote on whose we thought were the best and we could give as many buttons as we wanted to as many projects as we still had buttons for. So um, I gave her some of my buttons because I thought it was a pretty good move to make a poster based on this game. And she did um, some really cool artwork for Fireboy and Water Girl too. Um, honestly, I wish I had access to like the PowerPoint that she put together because it was really well made. Okay, so the next game I'm going to play is Run. Um, I used to play this one a lot too. This was definitely my go-to when the teacher would send us to the computer in elementary school. Um, I'm going to play on fast mode and I could never really get past like level 3 when I was a little kid, but uh, let's see how I do now. Uh, this and Papa's Freezeria, I think. Oh, I guess it saved my progress from the last time I tried to play. So... Like I said in my first video, um, I put a little disclaimer out. I'm not good at video games. I have fun playing them, but I'm not good at them. I have to look up walkthroughs a lot of the time, and I struggle with things like pressing buttons at the right time and remembering sequences to do complex things. So if you're watching this and you're going, come on, you can do better than that. No, I can't. It's okay. It's true. I can't. I'm, but I'm having fun. Oh man, um, another story from school. This isn't from high school, this is from middle school. When I was in grade 6, some boys in my class... So we were in math class, right? And the teacher set us up with, um, straws to make triangles with so that we could measure the angles with our protractors. And I remember that some of the boys started playing with the straws uh, in ways they had not been intended to. Basically, they were just pretending they were smoking. They were like, oh, guys, look at me, I got cigarettes, right? Because you put 11-year-old boys near something that vaguely re resembles a cigarette, and you get 
guys who pretend to smoke, right? It's no big deal. Everyone knows that it's no big deal. Except, apparently, the vice principal of my elementary school. Alright, so we all go home after that. I'm pretty sure math was the last period class. Anyway, we all go home. The next day, we're in first period gym. We get an announcement on the loudspeaker that my math teacher's class had to go to the cafeteria. And... It was urgent, and we had to go there right now. So, we all file into the cafeteria, and we sit alongside the cafeteria tables, and the vice principal walks in, and our homeroom teacher and our math teacher walk in. And we're all, like, pretty confused now. We're like, okay, what's going on? Uh, the vice principal starts off by saying, How many of you are 12 years old? And about half of us raise our hands, you know, because we're in grade 6. Most of us are 11. She goes, if I called the police, they'd take the rest of you in too. I'm sorry? <laughs> what? She goes, yep, I am. I should call the police after what you guys have been pretending to do. She, we find out that this is actually about the straws that a couple boys were playing with in class the day before. They pulled us out of another teacher's class to tell us that we were going to have to go and empty our lockers in front of her, throw out any straws that we had, and if... We were caught with straws at any point during the year. We were going to be suspended on the spot. Now, of course, a lot of us didn't take this seriously, you know, because that's ludicrous, right? Suspended on the spot for having a straw. I'm sure our parents would have a lot to say about that, right? And calling the police? Yeah, it's more likely that she would have been slapped with a misuse of 911 fine, right? Except 11-year-old... Casey Dragmire did not think rationally, okay? 11-year-old Casey Dragmire took everything every authority figure said to her completely seriously. So she did, in fact, believe that she was in danger of going to prison. And she did, in fact, believe that she was going to be suspended if she was caught with another straw. But here's the thing. 11-year-old Casey also didn't like to throw things away. And I had a straw in my bag left over from the day before. And I was so scared that I just didn't tell them. And I told them, I don't have any straws, can I go back to class? And they believed me and they sent me back to class. Alright? And I figured that that would be fine and good and dandy. Then we get talks from all of our teachers that day. Because she went and told all of our teachers. And we get talking tos from all of them. And they all say the exact same thing. If you're caught with a straw at any point in the year, you're going to be suspended. Fine. A few months later, I'm digging through my bag looking for a pencil. And I grab something vaguely pencil-shaped. And I pull it out. And I see, to my horror, black or er, white and red stripes. It is a straw. I stuffed it into my bag as if it were an actual cigarette, and I was trying to hide it from the actual police, and I never told anyone about it, and I hoped that my teacher hadn't seen me, and it didn't seem like she had, but I really thought I was in danger. And that's the thing about those big proclamations like that that teachers make, alright? Because the guys that were pretending to smoke, you think they were taking that seriously? No, not for a second. They were like, oh yeah, haha, funny, right? You're gonna to call the police on me for holding a drinking straw. That's cool. Alright. Sure. But little unseasoned terrified Casey is freaking out because she thinks she's about to be suspended because she has a straw in her bag. Anyway, if you are a teacher and you do stuff like that to your students, you try to scare them with threats to call the police over tiny little things like pretending to smoke out of a plastic straw sincerely like get a hobby like do something else because all you're doing is petrifying children who aren't who you're trying to scare and making a fool of yourself years and years later because i still most days think back to myself remember that vice principal that threatened to call the police on you because two boys in your class were pretending to smoke out of plastic straws and i laugh my head off because that 
person is in charge of hundreds of students. Like, she's so unreasonable. Anyway, that was hilarious, and it actually, that story came up at my prom when we had our big grad class Remember When This Happened events, and someone submitted that. I thought it was very funny, and honestly, I'm kind of glad it happened, because for all the terrified months I spent wondering if I was going to get suspended because of a plastic straw, honestly, now I sincerely get to laugh. A lot. So, and I, I wouldn't have believed it if it hadn't happened to me, you know? It's one of those things you kind of have to live through before you grasp the entire scope of how freaking funny it is. Alright, so this game is uh, obviously getting too hard for me. So I'm going to switch over now to this cooking game on Friv.com. And this isn't the one I used to play. It looks like an updated version, but it is the same kind of cake. So I am going to try it. Uh, and see if it works the same way, pretty much. It kind of looks like Dora and Diego over here, and it used to be this little lady in a bonnet, so we'll see. But it does look like the same kind of thing. And it looks like it's more my speed, because it seems to give you the exact directions that you need. Hold on. This bowl? I'm trying to think of more ridiculous things that happened to me. Uh, once a teacher freaked out at me because I said, my friend said the word drunk. We were 12, 13 years old at the time, um, and we she just said it in passing in the hallway, and a teacher pulled me aside to tell me that it was inappropriate language for school. Uh, and that was from the same middle school, but it was a different teacher than the teacher who got upset with me for str the straw incident. You know, middle school is already weird. You don't need to add teachers being completely unreasonable to it, you know? So, the more I play this game, the more I realize that it's not exactly how I remember. Um, for instance, it was a, the one that I used to play was a lot less hand-holdy, and you actually got to, like, cook a little more, I guess. So, this is, this is fun, though. I, mean, I think I'm going to see this through to the end. Okay, so we have finished the cherry sauce that goes on the cake and taken the three layers out of the oven. So now it's time to time to make the cake. So Oh, this is the part that I get to Really? Cherries between the layers? Maybe I'll get to pick how many cherries go on it. I'm not optimistic, but... Yeah, no, I don't even get to pick how, mu how much chocolate goes on it. And there we have it. My perfect cake. Kind of looks like the cake from Portal. I will not play that again. No. Alright, so let's see if I can actually find it, because there is another game. I used to play this on my phone, and I, again, was not very good at it. But, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> So we've learned that we've learned that I am absolutely no better at Geometry Dash 
than I was when I was a little kid. Okay. Uh, so that was around five games. And I think that's enough for the video. So I'm going to say goodbye for now. Uh, like, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, and if there's a game that you feel like I missed, comment it down below. I'm not going to play Club Penguin. I know you can still play Club Penguin. But I never played Club Penguin as a kid. And I don't feel nostalgic about it. And honestly, I tried to play it uh, recently and I couldn't figure it out. So, I will probably play Webkins though. I loved Webkins. I lived on Webkins as a kid. Um, and when those Papa's Pizzeria, Freezeria, Donateria, Pancakeria games come back, I'm gonna definitely have an episode where I just play Papa's games. So, yeah, that's it for now. Uh, those are five games from my childhood that I miss and that I'm glad I can still play. Uh, happy graduation to everybody who's graduating now or whenever you're watching this video. And I wish you good luck. Alright.